is to need, to want, and to long wrong or is it right? Well, it depends because if we have associated our wanting with shame, then it's needing, it's neediness. If we've associated our wanting to with you know presence from within, then it's just a longing without needing to expect to anyone else but ourselves to fulfill that void. So just to make it simple, if we are wanting to want, then there's no problem with wanting. <laughs> if we're not wanting to want because we are relying on somebody other than ourselves, then wanting in itself becomes suffering, becomes this rat race where we're chasing the positive and we're resisting its opposite negative, which is the absence of what it is we're wanting. So for example, we're wanting a specific person. We're wanting this, if we're wanting this person and this person is not in our lives, then this wanting on its own uh, creates pain for us. And because it creates pain, we're not wanting to want this person. And then this is where wanting um, is, you know, followed by another emotion, which is shame. So we feel shame when we are feeling undeserving of the very thing it is we're wanting. And then we're also shaming because we feel undeserving, because we're not experiencing this very thing that we're wanting in our physical world. We're also feeling shame for whatever it is we're feeling uh, towards a specific person. And so this is when wanting becomes neediness and becomes like a closed circuit where we are actually, you know, there's one part of our of ourselves that is wanting one thing, and the exact other, you know, side of ourselves is wanting the opposite. So there is one part of us that is saying yes, and the other part of us that is saying no at the same time, and this is coming from trauma. So, in order to release this um, trauma, because usually when we have the, you know wanting somebody but it's wrong we actually get stuck in obsessing about them and then in order to counterbalance this obsession which is very painful we need to numb ourselves out and also disassociate and feel like we don't want this person so the counterbalance of over wanting and needing because we're shaming it is actually not wanting not needing and this is the exact recipe <laughs> to actually never break through whatever this connection is, either if it's, you know, karmic or soulmate or twin flame, um, if we're not allowing to heal through this, you know, we're not going to unveil the veils of Maya and illusion to see what this connection really is. And the reason why we're not supposed to see what this connection is, it's because it's not about the connection with the other person. It's actually how we connect with ourselves before the other person. And so if we are attached to this specific person, then we are actually neglecting ourselves on a daily basis. Uh, and because this self-neglect is painful, the more we neglect ourselves, the more we attach to the other person. And the more we attach to the other person, the more we neglect ourselves until we start using the attachment on the other person as a how do you call it, is a catalyst for us to awaken, to come into connection with ourselves. So um, being attached to a person, right? We can actually heal through this into more self-love if we make it okay to be attached to this person because we're using the attachment to this person to become our anchor so that we can remind ourselves that we are numbing out to ourselves we are abandoning ourselves and when is our biggest opportunity to love ourselves most is when we abandon ourselves of course that's not the only way to do it we could actually check in and connect with ourselves you know by just scanning through our body or connecting to our heart and feeling the love you know 
But wait, why, why can't we do it both ways? So the one way is that when we're feeling totally serene and calm and we feel like we love ourselves and that works just fine. And then we could actually use when, you know, the excuse of, you know, when we escape ourselves as an opportunity to connect with ourselves on a deeper level. So that way, when we are engaging in traumatic behavior, like when we, you know, uh, ruminate uh, or obsess with a specific person, what we can do, and instead of judging ourselves and shaming ourselves and then, you know, being stuck in that, stuck in that loop, what we can do is saying, you know what? I allow you to be attached to this person. And when you attach to this person, bring back the energy, you know, because that's the moment you know you are, you know, neglecting and escaping and rejecting yourself the most. Use that obsession that's, you know, because it's not an anchor, it's like a grip, but use that as an excuse to bring the anchor back within your body. So that way you bring your focus back into your body, back into self, and in that moment, you just bring your focus in your body and talk to your inner child by saying, I'm here for you, I'm here with you. Because the reason we are attached in the first place and we're gripping on anything on the outer world is because our inner child doesn't trust that we will be there for ourselves. And because it doesn't trust us, it's gripping onto anybody else but ourselves. Until we create the safe, you know, place within our bodies to remind our inner child that we are here for them. And once we do this rep repeatedly, then our inner child has no longer the need to grip on anyone else. And, you know, because we have cultivated that connection within. So, um, a specific person is playing the role of a mirror, right, um, to mirror back to us how we are disregarding, neglecting, rejecting that part of ourselves that is looking for comfort and love. And the more we are unaware of what this specific person is mirroring back to us, the, more, the longer we will be stuck in this um, you know, attachment uh, of an unavailable person because that person that's unavailable is mirroring back to us our unavailability within ourselves. So for the moment, as long as we are, you know, using this experience to grow from, this person is just a specific person that our ego is attached to. And the more we heal through this process, the more of this connection is revealed to really see what this connection is for us. But this is going to happen when we're not looking for it, when we're not interested in knowing what this connection is, but we're more interested into self-love and self-acceptance. Well, when our focus is primarily our connection to ourselves, then the connection that is on our outer world will reveal our, itself a lot faster. The more we are focused on what this connection is for us, the longer we're staying stuck you know, we're staying stuck in the version of ourselves that is not wanting a, a relationship with ourselves. And therefore, that version of ourselves is the one that is experiencing no relationship on the outer world as well. So the more important the other person becomes for us, the less important the connection and the relationship within ourselves becomes, you know, the inner union is. And therefore, there is no outer union. And that's how we get stuck. When we decide by repeatedly choosing ourselves that the connection we have with ourselves is the most important one, then we leave space for the relationship that is for us, that is our mirror of that version, to come and find us. So, yeah. So let us not, let, let us observe the shame and blame we've made and, you know, we've done to ourselves for not being in the relationship re relationship we want. Uh, because, you know, we've all been programmed that the outer world is what is real and not the inner world. And the truth is, it's only the inner world that once we've mastered, you know, choosing ourselves again and again, that is 
the gateway to a fulfilled life, not only physically having the life we want, you know, on the outer world, because there's a lot of, you know, options out there. And the options can be to have no relationship, to have a relationship with a person that we're not growing with together, or to have, you know, a loving relationship that also includes growth. And in order to have both love and the capacity to grow together, we need to make that a reality within ourselves that we are interested in self-love. We are interested in growth. And that's where being in love and also loving can be within the same relationship. So for me, eros, erotas, which comes from the Greek word erotas, has the same root of the word erotisi, which is question. So falling in love is actually getting to know, you know, not knowing and getting to know. And then there's also love, which is agapi, which is the stable energy, the more, you know, so there's one energy, erotas is the questions, is the more fluctuating energy, the one that questions, the one that lets go and shifts, it's the flexible, it's the dance, the dancing energy, it's the more the feminine energy, and then there's agapi, the presence, the consciousness, right? The more masculine energy, the one that is more stable. So when we are able to cultivate both energies, both the stability within ourselves and the flexibility within ourselves, like to also anchor, the stability is by anchoring in our inner world. And the flexibility comes when we are able to more and more de deep dive within ourselves, you know, go in deeper layers of awareness within ourselves. And when we are able to more and more fall in love with this process and feel safe in our bodies, we're actually becoming the very relationship, divine union we're looking for. And this is what I, you know, wish for you. If this is what you're looking for, I wish for you to find more and more deep connection within yourself, love, self-acceptance, erota, you know, being in love with yourself, with your life. And then allowing for life to mirror this back to you by many other people and situations. And of course, with your divine union. And with this, I am Maro and I'm the founder of Awakening Games. And please do not hesitate to find me on social media and ask me any questions because I love to answer your specific questions. Until the next video then.